So the flare sequence will suppress fluid signal. So the normal CSF in the ventricular system or in the sulcal spaces will not give any signal. Flare is a very good sequence to appreciate subtle abnormalities. Just for example, if you see in these two images, here the cortical bright signal you may not be able to appreciate clearly because of the adjacent CSF bright signal. But here you will be able to appreciate the same bright signal much easily because of the background suppression of the CSF signal. So when you are looking at the flare sequence, always look for any abnormal bright signals either in the cortex or in the white matter or in the bone also. And more importantly, look at the sulcal spaces because the CSF in the sulcal spaces should be completely suppressed. Thereby, the normal sulcal spaces should not give any signal in the flare. Presence of any bright signal in the sulcal spaces, you should be able to pick it up because it can be meningitis or it can be slow flow in the vascular structures. So the normal sulcal spaces or the ventricles should not give any bright signal on the flare sequence. But there are certain mimics where presence of bright signal in the ventricular system can be considered as normal. Particularly in the lateral ventricles, many times you will be able to appreciate these small focal dots of hyperintensities. Not only here, but in the prepontine systems also, you will see some bright signal. This happens because of CSF flow. From our understanding previously, at the foramen of Munro, CSF is moving with significant velocity. So these bright signals always occurs just above the foramen of Munro, where there is significant movement of CSF is happening. Similarly, at the prepontine cisterns, where there is significant movement is happening. So the normal flare sequence will suppress the static CSF, but if the CSF is moving with significant velocity, it may not be suppressed completely leading to artifactual bright signals should not be confused with pathology. Coming to the 3D flare sequence. 3D flare is an extremely useful sequence, particularly if you are doing on 3D MRI because it provides excellent resolution and not only the brain parenchyma, it covers many other areas also. And it can be reformatted into the axial and coronal images also. As you can see, it can cover the orbits, the paranasal sinuses, the neck spaces, even superior aspects of cervical spine also will be covered in using the 3D flare. And 3D flare suppresses the fat signal also. So any bright signal anywhere in the parenchyma or the sulcal spaces or the calvarium or even in the orbits, it can be picked up using 3D flare sequence. Just for example, very subtle bright signals in the cortex can also be picked up using a 3D flare sequence. In another case of focal seizures, even a very tiny area of gliosis can also be picked up using a 3D flare sequence. This tiny abnormality may not be picked up easily on the T2 weighted images, but the 3D flare, because of the excellent resolution, it will be easy to pick up any bright signal in the 3D flare sequences. So when you are looking on the 3D flare sequence, always look for any bright signal anywhere in the brain parenchyma or in the sulcal spaces or the calvarium, make use of the 3D flare to look at other than the brain parenchyma, that is the orbits, paranasal sinuses, neck spaces and the cervical spine.